Before we begin, I would like to advertise my books, Above Heaven and Dance of Frozen Death. If you like my takes on storytelling, please consider giving them a read. Links in the description. Now, on with the video. Let me in. Let me in. Greetings, fellow mortals. I want to start this out by saying that there is nothing wrong with Succession's writing. In the first few episodes that I've watched, I have been impressed with the pacing, plot, and reveals. Plus, the music and performances are on point. This isn't a critique in a way that I think that the show is bad. It is, in fact, very well done. Instead, it falls into the trap of the first season syndrome, or the first act syndrome, or the first book syndrome, or even the first episode syndrome. Basically, the start of a long-running story or series asks you to endure certain difficulties at the start. Every single great long-running story has to take its first steps. It has to establish characters, settings, motives, plots, skills, ideals, and everything else. Even something like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul had to build the foundation before getting to the best parts. After all, would anyone say that the first season of Breaking Bad is the best part? No, of course not, and there's a reason that the first episodes start and end with a strong hook. They need to gain the audience's attention and keep it long enough to get them to the next episode. Then they have to do it again and again until they have the audience's full investment. Sometimes it takes until the very end of the first season to accomplish that goal. Well, I know what stopped me. You know what? It's never stopping me again. That's the hard part, getting the audience emotionally invested into people in a story that doesn't really exist. Usually it's done through empathy, wish fulfillment, and sometimes even a sense of dread or fear in some genres. For example, Walter White is an unhappy man who isn't as successful as he would want, and then he suddenly gets cancer. To make money for his family when he dies, Walter decides to cook meth. In The Glory, we watch Moon Dung Un suffer through intense amounts of suffering and bullying so that we care about her revenge story. In One Piece, many of the characters are giving heartbreaking backstories where they go through suffering that we can't even begin to imagine. Remember that storytelling is about the human experience. Even if you don't agree with the characters' ideals and mindset, you can understand what motivates them and why they are the way that they are. It's about a change in perspective, where we sympathize where they're coming from. If we went through what they did, we might very well be the same way as them. That human connection to the story makes us care about events which are completely fictional, and so many people can have similar experiences, except there is a problem. Creators do have to get people past their barriers to entry. They have to not only get you to try their art, but also come back for more. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. The hard part is not that Succession has larger barriers to entry than other series, it's just that it has an unusual combination of walls pushing away newer fans. I think that the first barrier is that this is a very slow burn. The pacing is at a crawl. Now, this is intentional, of course. From what I've seen, most of the show involves conversations where the characters try to manipulate each other to get what they want. And there is a ton of business jargon and gobbledygook being thrown around. It's a game of chess meeting a game of golf. It is a whisper in the wind. Everything is subtle, intentional, and slow. You have to pay a lot of attention to the small details. If you don't, you won't have the full experience. This is not a series that someone can have in the background and understand what's happening. You can't have it on your phone as you do chores, work, or even play a game. Pay attention or you lose something, and the slow burn requires a high attention span. It's definitely different in that way. Even slower, more intentional shows like The Sopranos or Better Call Saul can be experienced while multitasking. If you compare this level of pacing to the glory, the progress seems to be moving at the speed of an iceberg, and even Vinland Saga moves faster than this. All of this isn't to criticize the show because this is necessary for the story they're trying to tell. All that I'm saying is that this is in fact a barrier to entry. An hour has passed and the teams are still tied at one all, which raises a pertinent question. What is taking so long? 
I like slow burns where you have to pay attention. That's not the problem. It's a combination of other barriers to entry that makes it harder to invest myself into this. I think the second problem is that the characters aren't very likable or relatable at first. These are people who have been wealthy for a long time. All four of the kids grew up in luxury. I don't think it's controversial to say that it's hard to relate to these people at first. Some of them are cruel, stupid, unusual, detached, and entitled. They're weird, and you know that they're going to be rich no matter what happens. But the hard part for me personally is that I actually agree with Logan Roy. His children are absolute idiots. I can see why he's reluctant to hand things over to them. I got to the end of episode 3 and nodded my head when he insulted Kendall. Now I'm okay with watching shows about bad people. I praise Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul all the time. And I recently finished rewatching The Shield where the Shrek team is filled with the worst people imaginable. Even the other new show that I'm trying to get into, Peaky Blinders, is filled with criminals. But the thing about all of these shows is that they manage to find a way to make me feel sympathetic to all the characters' situations all the while being impressed by the fact that these people are competent at their jobs. Now, I know this is the point, but Kendall Roy and all of his siblings do not seem to be good at what they do. I get it, they're smothered under the shadow of their brilliant father, but it is a barrier to entry that people can have trouble getting past, especially with the slow pacing and the fact that we're constantly watching these weirdos having conversations with each other. Hey, shut up! Shut up. No, you shut up! And finally, I think another barrier to entry is just how uncomfortable I feel at all times. These people and situations are pure cringe. Once again, yes, I realize that this is intentional. You're supposed to roll your eyes when Kendall cusses to sound tough and like he's in charge. Roman's oddities and cruel sense of humor is supposed to make you feel bad. Shiv's obvious favoritism with Logan makes you want to look away. Connor's hippiness is perhaps the most normal, but he feels so detached like he's in another world. Plus, there's all the other characters that make you grimace from their decisions and awkwardness. It can be hard to watch at times, especially if you hate cringe. I'm not gonna lie here, there are a few scenes in Arrested Development, Parks and Rec, The Office, and other comedy shows where I need to fast forward or go out of the room or something. It's just too much for me. I feel ashamed for people being so stupid, which is weird because I don't particularly feel embarrassed in real life about anything. It's more my empathy for characters that makes me cringe. But with those more fast-paced comedy shows, it's more tolerable. You can get past the more awkward moments faster. This is where the odd combination of barriers to entry comes into play. None of these individual elements stop people from watching. When combined, they create a bitter cocktail that can make you do a spit take if you're not prepared for what you're about to taste. <laughs> So far, I have zero critiques with the actual writing of the show, and it's all been well executed. It's more that I struggle to be invested despite how well the storytelling has been. I can see what they want to accomplish and where they're going. Everything is intentional. It can be somewhat hard to get into, though. In fact, I know plenty of people who couldn't get into it at all. And there are a bunch of other people who loved it, and they all say the same thing. You have to get past the first season. If you do that, you will be completely invested. I get that, and I know when I do get to the end of the first season, I will become obsessed. I bet that it will make future videos praising this whole series. It makes me curious about the mindset behind the show. Were the creators intentionally making the show this way to gatekeep just a little bit? To make it harder for rabid fan bases to grow and make a toxic hole in the internet? Because I haven't seen a lot of Succession fans acting anything like Rick and Morty fans. Or this could simply be someone's vision. This could very well be their dream project. The pacing and barriers to entry could exist because this was the way it was meant to be. It's how they envisioned it. And they knew that HBO would support them as they constructed their narrative. Or perhaps this could all be some sort of inside joke. I think that you would be surprised by how often writers add small details which is only meant to be noticed by one or two people as a joke. That's not funny. That's not 
I do look forward to getting into the meat of the matter with Succession. I know that it'll be worth the effort, but I just have to push through these next few episodes. I'm literally psyching myself up as I speak. It will be worth it. I just wish that they didn't create the perfect barriers to entry for me specifically. Terrible people as characters. Business jargon, slow pacing, cringe events, especially those involving sex, having to pay complete attention at all times or lose an aspect of the experience. It's a perfect wall for me, but I'm determined to break through it. I just wonder what the reasons are for these hills and how many people were turned away by the show borderline daring them to quit. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and to keep the dialogue going in the comment section. And please consider giving my books, Above Heaven, Dance of Frozen Death, and Vows of Blood and Honor, which will be released in September, a chance. I appreciate you. Do not despair.